Right, and I can warmly welcome you all to St. Matthew Lutheran Virtual Worship this morning. We're so glad to have you here um, with us today to celebrate and to hear a word from scripture and to be supported by our Christian community via Zoom. I'd like to let you know that Pastor Brian is not with us today. He's on vacation this Sunday and will return back to work on Tuesday. I will be on silent retreat um, through Thursday morning, starting at dinner time today. So I'll be putting that little message on my email out of the office for now and uh, reconvening with you at the end of the week. Please note that we are having our first outdoor worship service in person. It's been long awaited. This is our soft opening to practice our social distancing. It will be on August 30th at 4.30 in the afternoon in the church lawn behind our church. You'll see more information forthcoming in an email about what to expect. And it is practice for us. We'll do it for two Sundays in a row at 4.30. The 6th of September is the second day. And then on September 13, we're going to shift to our official time, 11 o'clock on Sunday morning. And we plan to have those outdoor worship services as long as the weather holds out and our practices are adequate to the needs. So grateful to our reopening task force for all their hard work and to all of you who will make it possible for us to meet safely in person. A reminder that we accept prayers in the chat. It's the speech bubble at the bottom of your screen. You can click on it and type in your, your prayer request and then press the enter or return button on your keyboard. And I will pick those up during the prayers of intercession and pray them on behalf of our group. Welcome to those who are visiting with us today. We're so glad that you have joined us for this virtual worship service. And we'd like to invite you to other online opportunities. You see printed on the screen our website and you can sign up for our emails, which will clue you into our Zoom um, addresses so that you can get connected to us or you can send us a message via the website. So glad you're here. With all those things then before us, I invite you to prepare yourself for worship.
We begin with confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us renew us and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us and for his sake, God forgives all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the church of Christ and by Christ's authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please join in singing our opening hymn.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Rick, if you could advance the slide. Yeah. In peace, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. pray. O oh God, with all your faithful followers of every age, we praise you, the rock of our life. Be our strong foundation and form us into the body of your Son, that we may gladly minister to all the world, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. It's now time for the children's sermon. So I brought with me today a few rocks. And that is because I wanted to think with you just a little bit about the disciple named Simon. I'm gonna hold that so you can look inside at my rocks. Anybody know stories about Simon the disciple? He's also known as Peter. Sometimes he's even called Simon Peter. It's the same guy, but Simon was given a new name by Jesus. And in fact, it happens in today's gospel lesson. We're going to hear it in just a few minutes. Now, by this time, Jesus has had his disciples with him. They've been sent out in ministry. He's taught them a lot. And he wants to kind of see if they're getting it. And so he asks them, almost like a final exam question, he says, who do you say that I am? And they give all kinds of answers, answers like other people are giving, well, maybe Elijah, maybe the prophet. But it's Peter, Simon Peter, who says, you are the Messiah. And he gets it right. Bonus. And that's when Jesus gives him his new name. He says, Simon, I'm going to call you Peter. And upon this rock, I will build the church. Now, you and I, we probably heard that a lot of times, and we're just like, yeah, he's called Peter, and we'll build a church upon him, no problem. But there's a play on words that you might miss unless you knew the Greek. Peter comes from the Greek word petra, which means rock. So basically, Jesus is saying, hey, Rocky, I'm going to name this church, I'm going to name you Rocky, and I'm going to build this church on you, Rock. Kind of cool, huh? Later in Scripture... The epistles pick up on this idea of rocks and call us all living stones upon which the church is built. So it's not just Peter upon whom the church, who, with whom the church is built. It's all of us rocks that build the church, build the body of Christ. 
as a kid, I was taught a song about that. It was called, I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. I see some of you smiling. You must know that song. All the follow Jesus all around the world. Yes, we're the church together. Now, here's the part I think that's really kind of salient for us in COVID times. The church is not a building. The church is not a steeple. The church is not a resting place. The church is a people. I am church. You are the church. We are the church together. So I invite you today and honor the gospel lesson to choose a favorite rock and to keep it with you this week to remember that we are the church. We are the rocks which build the body of Christ of the world today. And Jesus' message is lived out through our lives because of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We continue right now with the readings from Scripture. The reading this morning is from Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 8. And in response to God's merciful activity, we are to worship by living holistic, God-pleasing lives. Our values and viewpoints are not molded by the time in which we live, but are transformed by the Spirit's renewing work. God's grace empowers different forms of service among Christians, but all forms of ministry function to build up the body of Christ. A reading from Romans. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For us, as in one body, we have many members, and not all the members have the same function. So we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually we are members of one another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. for picking up on that song. And I also want to say thank you because I neglected to earlier for our worship leaders today, Ben Wright, Bette McIntyre, and our Zoom master, Rick Hansen. <laughs> Here now, the Holy Gospel, according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. 
Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you O Christ. Christ. One day when I was in kindergarten, I had a bright idea. We were coloring in apples on a sheet of paper, four of them on the sheet. And we were gonna cut them out and put them on the bulletin board on a big apple tree. So I thought to myself, why fuss about coloring inside the lines when I can just color the whole entire paper red and then cut them out later? The other kids at my table saw what I was doing and thought it the model of efficiency. And so they did it too. Well, all was well and good until the teacher and Mrs. H came by our table. She looked at my paper and she did not see an ingenious solution to a problem. She saw a mess. Take that paper and start again, she said. And this time, Stay inside the lines. Stay inside the lines. It's a message we've all received at one time or another. Follow the rules. Keep your head down. Do the tried and true. And above all, don't make trouble. But this is not the advice that St. Paul gives in our lesson today from Romans. He writes, By the mercies of God, I appeal to you. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. He goes on to cite examples about living in a countercultural way. Looking honestly at yourself instead of promoting yourself using your gifts not for your own gain, but to build up others. And if you read on in the passage, beyond what we shared today, you'll see that in this chapter, Paul also expects Christians to do other unexpected things, to make peace with others, rather than protecting your own territory, to care for the poor, rather than looking the other way, to welcome the stranger instead of being wary of them. Do not be conformed to the world's habits, Paul is saying. Color outside the lines and it will transform you by the power of the Holy Spirit. St. Paul was indeed a person who lived outside the lines. He was raised as a Pharisee a sect of Judaism which focused on living out the law given by God. 517 laws of scriptures governed everything from when to wash your hands, to how to treat mold in your house, to whom you could eat with. And Paul, he kept them all. But when he became a Christian, he began to see how God's good law could be twisted into slavish rule following rather than loving devotion. And so St. Paul stepped outside the lines and began to preach to non-Jews, people who didn't keep the law at all, and told them that they didn't have to keep those laws in order to become Christians. It caused a lot of conflict but the Holy Spirit's work in Paul and others like him transformed the work of the church from being a Jewish faith into a universal one that welcomed all people, including you and me. The truth is, sometimes you have to step outside the accepted boundaries because frankly, the established boundaries are too small. Martin Luther is an example of this, our forebear that our church is named after. Upon realizing that the foundation of medieval theology was based on the notion that you could buy your way into heaven through the sale of indulgences, he went outside the lines and returned to the Holy Scriptures 
proclaiming that salvation was to be found in the grace of God alone. The civil rights movement in our country is another example. Luminaries like Martin Luther King Jr. and Fannie Lou Hamer and John Lewis stirred up what John Lewis called good trouble and went outside the lines to challenge the laws that kept people, black people from voting, public amenities and equal opportunities. In each of these cases, new possibilities were created because people were willing to explore the in-between places, the outside the boundary places, the places beyond what was commonly accepted as right and wrong, and to look closely at the effects of current practice and policy, and to listen to the lived experience of their neighbors. But let's be fair, coloring inside the lines has its place. As an adult, I can identify with Mrs. H. She must have had 25 kids in that classroom and was trying to, probably trying to help us work on our fine motor skills. Instead of following the lesson plans, here I was coloring the whole page red and getting a whole table of kids to miss the lesson plan. And we finished 10 minutes early which couldn't have been a good thing for Mrs. H. Thing is, I'm pretty sure that if Mrs. H had just asked me why I did what I did, she would have acted differently. Because I wasn't trying to mess things up. It just saw that the lesson had wider possibilities. Similarly, St. Paul isn't saying, do not be conformed to this world as a means for telling us to be iconoclastic or to be anarchist or to have a wholesale abandonment of civil order. He was telling the Christians in Rome to measure their actions by God's standards and not by the world's. He was telling them that like Jesus, there would be things that they would have to stand up for. Things that other people won't like, will misjudge and even call them out for. If you do good to your enemies, like it says at the end of chapter 12, there will be people who criticize you for it. But that is how Jesus lived his life. He did good to his enemies. He loved all people. And that is the measure by which we judge our actions and our ethics, not by what other people are doing or what the pundits say. We live in challenging times where loud voices claim to right and claim the other side wrong. It seems there is little middle ground these days, little understanding. And therefore, it is incumbent upon us as people of faith to remind ourselves where our boundaries come from. From Jesus and his life. We seek knowledge from the scriptures and the Holy Spirit. And we know that our faith teaches us that all of us need forgiveness and grace. Our actions and our ethics come from the belief that no matter the death dealing forces in the world, that God's forgiveness and God's life is greater. And it is the intention for all people and for the earth itself. And nothing will stop that resurrection power. Today, I want you to let Paul's words inspire you to think about how you are coloring. What lines have you been staying inside of? Are there lines that are unjust, that keep people out, that punish rather than help? Are you called to stir up some good trouble? Maybe there are some boundaries that need to be crossed. Take heart. St. Paul's words, as if they were written for you. I appeal to you by the mercies of God, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed 
by the renewing of your mind. Be willing to color outside the lines and let the Holy Spirit shape the outcome. Amen.
Please join me in confessing our faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The prayers of intercession with each petition will end with the words, Lord, in your mercy, to which the congregation may respond, hear our prayer. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Please continue your private prayer, and we will share the prayer of intercession shortly. Lord, our rock, you are our foundation in Jesus Christ, your son, whom we confess as the living God, Prepare your church for its mission in bearing witness to Christ, both here and at home throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah, our prayer. Yeah. You call forth praises from the far reaches of the universe to the smallest of creatures. Join our songs to theirs, that a spirit of praise and thanksgiving will arouse us to cherish this wondrous home you give us. Protect the earth from the dangers of fire, pollution, and overuse. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord. Direct the leaders of the countries, legislators and magistrates, mayors and councils to walk in your ways. 
Guide those in political office to ensure fair and peaceful elections. Help leaders regard those in need with mercy and fulfill your loving purposes in the governance of people. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Though we walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve us, deliver us, and fulfill your purpose for us. According to your steadfast love, grant healing and wholeness to all who are bereaved, in trouble, or adversity, or sick and in need of care, especially for Bruce McIntyre, for Linda, as Wednesday marks the four-year anniversary of her death, for Dick and Judy Kraft, for Caro, for Leah Olson Kennedy battling COVID, for Carolyn, for Lisa and Melissa, the Lindquist's friends, for Tammy Krashar, for all the California firefighters and people affected by the fires. For Kurt, as he continues his clinical pastoral education. For grace upon all of us, our spiritual leaders, our youth, the incarcerated, the elderly, the fearful, educators, that we all mind the beauty and the opportunities during this time. For Pastor Julie during her silent retreat, that she renews her minds and is transformed. And for all of those whom we name silently at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You call us to color outside the lines where the boundaries have restricted entry or cut down creativity. Give us courage to open ourselves to the transformation you have in mind and not to be conformed to the ways of the world around us that are not loving or true. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You are the everlasting rock from which we were hewn, and you restore your people to joy and gladness. In the blessed memory and hope, we thank you for the lives of our beloved dead, especially David Young, who was laid to rest this week. Bring us with them to our heavenly home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear prayer. our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Receive this blessing. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God and Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn.
Go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage, hold fast to that which is good, render to no one evil for evil, strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, honor all people, love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.